There's a common story within the Israeli and foreign media that the election results show a close race between the forces of the right and the left. They display charts showing the right with 61 seats and the left with 59. You even hear some Israeli political consultants spinning pipe dreams about Yair Lapid being the next prime minister leading a center-left government. These analyses are terribly superficial, and for one reason. The right is united, the left isn't. It's not only fragmented, it's dysfunctional. Take the notion of a prime minister Lapid. What would have to happen for this to become a reality? He'd have to carry not just his own political center and the Labour Party, he'd have to embrace the moderate left Meretz and the Israeli-Palestinian MKs on the Palestinian left. Lapid himself gave the answer yesterday, saying he would never join a government that included Hanin Zuabi. This statement perfectly represents the dysfunction of not just the Israeli center left, but the entire political system. Israelis like to say that they're a democracy, but that's not the case. Israel is, is at best an ethnocracy offering inferior rights to Palestinians. If Israel was a democracy, the votes of Palestinian citizens would count this equally to those of Jewish voters. But not only does Yair Lapid shun Hanin Zuabi, no Israeli ruling coalition has ever included a Palestinian party. This was even true when labor won the vast majority of Palestinian votes up until the 1990s. The Israeli far right has so demonized Palestinian leaders like Zuabi that she's radioactive as far as the Israeli Jewish voter is concerned. Unless and until Israelis can distance themselves from such racist attitudes, Israel will not be a democracy. The Israeli political consultant Tom Wegner posted on his Facebook page some thoughts about the election. Among them were the astute observation that no Israeli center-left coalition will ever rule again as long as Palestinians are closed out of the system. The question, of course, is how you change things, and that's not easy. Racism has ruled in Israeli politics for so long that it's almost impossible to change attitudes. In the U.S., it also took decades from the 1950s when the blacks couldn't vote until the 1970s when they began to recognize their political power and won contested elections. And not until 2008 did we get an African-American president. That took nearly 60 years. In Israel, the racism is even deeper and will take even longer to renounce. Parties like Hadash and Dam are a good start because they embrace Jews and Palestinians campaigning together. But these are clearly minority parties that are shunned by most of the Jewish majority. That doesn't minimize their importance. It only shows just how far Israel has to go. One thing that must happen is that Israeli Jews must criticize the sort of racism inherent in statements like that of Lapid, which he made concerning Zawabi. Another is to insist that parties of the Jewish left like Meretz become parties of the Israeli left that their ranks and their platform fully express the aspirations of not just Jewish voters, but Palestinian as well.